Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we finally get to take a look at the Polymega. Some people are claiming that this is the ultimate retro console, and I actually pre-ordered this about two years ago, and I finally got it in my possession last week. And I'm actually really excited to take a look at this thing. Now, if you're not familiar with the Polymega, this was known as Retro Blocks in 2018. But basically, what we have here is a modular retro emulation console. Now, I have the base model here, which only has the disk drive, but we should be able to do PS1, Sega Saturn, Sega CD. We can do 32X CD, Neo Geo CD, Turbo Graphics, and PC Engine CD, plus Arcade CD ROM 2. But if you want the full experience out of the Polymega and you want to play your own carts in this thing, they do offer modules for SNES, NES, Mega Drive, and PC Engine. You can buy a deluxe set or buy the modules individually. So let's go ahead and get the base unit out. Uh, overall, it does have a little bit of a heft to it. We have been seeing pictures of this. We saw renders of it. It really hasn't changed much from, uh, you know, the original design that they showed us when we did the pre-orders a couple years ago. Round back here, Ethernet, SD card, full-size HDMI, and our power in. Up front, we have that disk drive, two USB ports, and our power button. And if you did opt for the deluxe set or extra modules, this front slides right off. There's kind of a little eject button. And you'd slide the modules directly onto the Polymega. That way we can play our cart-based games. PC Engine, Mega Drive, SNES, and NES right now. So with the base unit, you also get a wireless controller. This does come with a 2.4 GHz dongle. That'll definitely help out with latency. I do believe this also has Bluetooth built in. But we've seen these controllers in the past. The first one to bring them to market was GameSir. I believe that's the original creator. I've done a review on this same controller, but the GameSir version, and I was actually a big fan of it. I used it for over a year with basically everything that I ran on the channel. If we dig down a bit deeper, we do get an HDMI cable micro USB to charge that included controller up, and the power supply for the Polymega itself. This looks like a 75 watt power supply. And the Polymega is actually powered by an Intel CPU. It's a Celeron dual core at 2.9 gigahertz. We will do a teardown by the end of this video to see exactly what we got in this thing. It's a very simple design, but I do think they did a great job with it. I personally like the look of it. We've got that eject button up front here with a little LED indicator for that CD drive. Our USB ports, power button. Around back, like we saw, we do have that micro SD card slot, Ethernet port, full-size HDMI, and power input. Now, this only has 32 gigabytes of internal storage right out of the box, but on the bottom, we do have a very easily accessible M.2 drive, so we can upgrade the storage. When it comes to the specs of the Polymega, it's nothing to write home about. I mean, this is a mini PC powered by an Intel CPU, but for the systems that this thing is meant to emulate, it's going to do just fine. For the CPU, we have the Intel G4900T, two cores, two threads. This is a coffee-like CPU with a clock speed of 2.9 gigahertz. Built-in Intel UHD 610 graphics, two gigabytes of DDR4, 32 gigabytes of internal eMMC storage, plus we have the option to add an M.2 drive. I've actually seen up to two terabytes and that should be plenty. 802.11 AC Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.2, and as for the operating system, it's a custom build of Linux by Polymega. I'm not exactly sure what they're calling their operating system, but I can tell you it actually does look pretty good. So when it comes to specs, it's definitely not a monster, but it's going to handle the games it's meant to emulate just fine. I'm sure they've made sure of this coming out of the door with it, and they've had a lot of time to work on the software side of things. So let's go ahead and get this thing powered up. I've got it connected to my 27-inch Samsung monitor. By the way, this is the first boot. I did hear that fan kick up a little bit. Not too loud, at least right now, but it's not doing much but booting up for the first time. And I'm guessing we will have a little bit of setup to do. controller setup and I do have the dongle plugged in so we're working over 2.4 gigahertz and not Bluetooth we can choose our language our system region and then we have to agree to some terms here so let me fast forward this a bit and it brings us right to the front end now this is the operating system for the Polymega nice and clean like the colors got that dark background everything's really easy to access and with the base unit it did come with some pre-installed games Nothing spectacular, but you do have some stuff that you can play right now. 
Now, as of making this video, there's no way to sideload ROMs from an SD card or a USB drive. I'm sure that this is going to change down the road, but the Polymega was really designed to play from your original media, be it a cart if you have the cart modules, or a disc with the base unit. I was really hoping that by the time I got my hands on this, we'd be able to pop a USB drive in this and test out a bunch of different games, but they did preload some stuff on here from NES, SNES, we have a PS1 game, and some PC Engine stuff. I will throw some discs in here in a second, but let's go down to the settings and see what we have here. So we've got the home, we can search, our database, screenshots, controllers, and settings. From here, I wanted to check out the video settings, really. We can update. And there's not much going on here. I mean, we can change the overall resolution. We're set at 1080p, 60 right here, but inside of each game, we do have some more options to go over, and we'll take a look at that in a second. Now, I haven't connected to Wi-Fi, and I'm sure that there are some updates available. We can update over Wi-Fi, but right now, I just want to pop a PS1 game in here and see what happens. Let's see how quick it loads, if we can get right into some gameplay, and how well it plays. So we'll go with something simple. Just got Tekken 3 here. It's an original PlayStation 1 game. We've got a disc icon on screen, and you can definitely hear that thing spin up. And there we have it. So it's read the disc drive, shows that we have Tekken 3, and from here we can actually play the game directly from the disc, or we can install it to internal storage. But since we're kind of lacking with only 30 gigs, I'm not going to install anything right now. I'm going to play it directly from the disc. This does have a built-in metadata and artwork database, and I'm sure when you're online it will update that over time, but for Tekken 3 at least, we did have the metadata and the artwork, so we have the box art on the main menu. And remember, this is all running from that disk, so load times will be a bit slower. If I installed this on the internal storage, I'm sure we could load up a lot faster, but there will be a little bit of a wait time. It's definitely not going to be as bad as the original PlayStation 1 was with some games but it's not going to be as fast as you're used to if you're just like emulating ROMs off of a hard drive or even a USB drive. So yeah, this does look really good. We're at 1080p here, and there are a few video settings. We will take a closer look when I connect this to my game capture. I know it's a bit hard to see here, but if you press the poly mega button, we can go ahead and exit the game. We can take a screenshot, or we can go into the video settings. We can change the aspect ratio, we can stretch it out. This is at 4x3 zoomed, or we can go full stretch if you want to. Personally, I'm going to leave it at 4x3 for this game. We also have a couple filters like composite video cables, RGB video cables, and there's some curvature that you can set up with this thing. Like I mentioned, we will take a closer look at that in a second, but I want to finish this round at least, and then I want to test out Sega Saturn, because I've heard from a lot of people that the Sega Saturn emulator that they built for this works absolutely amazingly. When it comes to PlayStation 1, I mean, you really shouldn't have any issues with this. This looks really good, it's playing just fine, and with this controller connected over that 2.4 GHz dongle, input lag is very, very minimal. And if we just want to quit out of this game here, it'll bring us right back into the main menu. Now what I want to do is test out Sega Saturn, because that's one of the main claim to fames to the Polymega. So we'll just go with Sega Rally, give it a second to initialize, that disc is inserted. I can hear it spinning up. And uh, yeah, hopefully it does show up. I know this works in my original Sega Saturn, so we shouldn't have an issue here. This is the US version. It's just taking a little longer to load. There we go. Let's see how this thing handles Sega Saturn. I'm not going to install it to the internal storage. We're going to run directly from the disc. Alright, let's go ahead and get into a little bit of gameplay here. So far so good, this is actually looking really nice, and anytime I emulate this with RetroArch and the Yoba Sanchiro core on Android, Windows, or even Linux, one thing that really annoys me are holes in the ground up ahead. With this here, I'm not seeing them. And if you wanted to use the Beetle Core with an x86 CPU that has enough power to push this at full speed, you won't notice it there either, but with the Obasi and Chiro, I've always noticed it. No matter what I did with the game, there was holes in the ground up ahead, especially in this area here where there's lots of dirt, and you can see really far ahead. I'm not seeing it, and I'm really glad that this isn't on the Polymega. I mean, that would have kind of upset me if I saw it here also. 
So before we tear this thing down and take a look inside of it, I wanted to give you a closer look at this UI. Personally, I'm a big fan of it. I think it looks great. It's very simple. We've got the Now Playing, My Collection, Playlist, Media, and we have System. If we go to My Collection, you can just scroll through your systems right here and find the games you do have installed on the internal storage. Now, we only have 32 gigabytes of internal storage, but we can always add an M.2 SSD. We've also got, you know, Playlist, Continue Playing. We've got Media, which will be all of the games that are installed on the internal storage and system. So we can go home, we can search, view database, we can check out the screenshots we've taken of the games we've played. We can set up a different controller. Settings, restart system, we'll go to settings here. We've got our network, and what I've done is just connect to Wi-Fi and I've updated the system. Audio, video, from the main menu, there's not much we can change here with the video settings. I mean, we can always adjust the resolution, the display area, and we can enable that HD temporal blur. I like leaving this off, so I'm gonna leave it there. Storage. Like I mentioned, we only got around 32 gigs here, actually 30. Our database, which it pulls information and images from, and we have our system so we can update from here. Like I mentioned, I've done a full update on this thing. But yeah, I mean, it actually does look really good. It's very easy to navigate. Everything's just in one place. You can get to what you want to play really quickly. What I want to do here is just take a look at those different video settings a little closer. Since I'm recording over HDMI, it should be easier to see here. So I'm going to go back into Sega Rally Championship. And from here, I just want to take a look at all of the different video settings. So if we press the Polymega button on our controller, we can head over to our virtual display. Uh, aspect ratio, you can change this up. You can stretch it out. Personally, I like leaving it at standard 4x3 with a little bit of zoom on it. But you can go to the standard 4x3. This does clean it up a bit because we have a smaller image, but that zoom still looks really good. For these tests here, we're just going to leave it at 4x3. And we have the virtual display. So if we press up or down on our controller, we have a little bit of curvature. So it kind of looks like an old CRT. Personally, I wish we did have some bezels behind this to make it look a little better because we have so much black around the border. Next up, we have RGB, like we're connected over RGB cables. does have a little bit of scan line going on there, as you can see. We can also go to the RGB plus the curvature. There is an RGB with a little bit of a blur. Curvature plus blur. Now, this definitely darkens everything up a lot, and I'm just not a big fan of it. We can go to Composite, and we can also drop that resolution down to 720p. And from here, we can go through all of those different filters we saw at 1080, but it's going to be in 720. Personally, I think 1080p HD looks good, but I kind of wish that they would have added just a setting for scan lines along with this 1080p HD. It would have been really nice if they had a setting for just softer and stronger scan lines, just to give you that idea of a CRT without the curvature and everything like that. I think that would have been a cool little option, and I'm sure in the future they could always add it with a software update. And hopefully they are working on something like that. All right, so now it's time to tear this thing down. Getting to that M.2 and adding a new one is really easy. All you need is a smaller Phillips head. But to disassemble this unit, it's a bit more involved than I personally wouldn't recommend it. I'm sure my warranty is now void, but I really wanted to see what makes this thing tick and if we could upgrade anything at all inside of this unit. So I've got the screws out at the bottom. The top does come right off. I need to remove the power for this module connector. And we also have the Wi-Fi slash Bluetooth antenna, but this is hot glued to the card. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this out of the way real quick. So doing a once over, as you can see, we have that disk drive. And when it comes down to it, basically what we have here is an x86 based Linux PC with a custom motherboard. Now, unfortunately, I'm not seeing the RAM. I will have to pull this motherboard completely out to see if we can upgrade it, but I do not think we're going to be able to upgrade the RAM in it. I'm pretty sure it's just LPDDR4 soldered to the board. We only have two gigs of it. The way they've set this up is pretty cool. It's definitely a total custom job. Here's that blower style cooler on that Intel CPU. We will remove this cooler in a second. About the only thing we'd be able to upgrade in this theoretically is the CPU, but I'm not going to try it for this video. After all, we do have this smaller cooler and right now it's kind of a low end chip in here. This is going to be sufficient for the chip we're using. Two cores, two threads at 2.9 gigahertz, and we only have that 75 watt power supply. But if anybody's really interested in seeing the CPU upgraded in this, let me know in the comments below and I'll find something we can throw in here. But it is a socketed CPU. It's that Celeron G4900T. And the next thing I need to do is see if we can upgrade the RAM because that would be an easy little upgrade if underneath this board we have at least one DIMM slot. I don't think it's there, but let me remove this whole thing and see. 
So I've got all the screws out. Let's see what we got here. We'll go ahead and turn it over and unfortunately it's soldered to the board. I thought it would be. We have four chips here. So we have a total of two gigs. We have four 512 megabyte LPDDR4 chips. You know, at least for me, I would have loved to see a DIMM here. That way I could have thrown four, even eight gigs of RAM in this thing. I know it's definitely not going to be necessary. And for what we have here, it's going to emulate what we need to emulate on the Polymega just fine with this G4900T and two gigs of RAM. And down the road, when we're able to add our own emulators, I think there's a good chance that this thing could do GameCube at the native resolution with this chip here. It's not the most powerful, but at 2.9 gigahertz, I think we got a good chance. First impressions on the Polymega, I mean, it works great. It does work better than I thought it would. I love that Sega Saturn emulation. The UI looks great. Uh, unfortunately, I still think it's a bit overpriced for what we got here. If you've already got all these carts and all these discs, chances are you have the original consoles. And in my opinion, that would be the best way to play them. Now I can definitely understand if you do have a large collection and you upgraded the storage on this, you could take all of those discs and cartridge based games and transfer them over to the internal storage and play them that way. So in the end, you don't damage your physical media but you know if you're looking to get into emulation i would just start with android download retroarch and even on an x86 pc retroarch does have the option to play your disc based games on a pc you need a cd or a dvd drive and you can load your game right up with retroarch and choose the appropriate core and emulate it that way but if you don't want to go through the hassle of setting up and you do have a bunch of discs and cartridges laying around that you want to play on a different console i mean then the polymega might be for you but in my opinion, it is a bit overpriced for what we're getting here. Now, I will have a couple more videos coming up. I do want to install a different operating system on this and see what we can really emulate with this hardware. But until then, that's going to wrap it up for this one. I really appreciate you watching. And if there's anything else you want to see running on the Polymega, just let me know in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more, I will leave a few links in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.